Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the basics of how to use the new AccuPose tool to create and customize character poses using the control point and lock effectors, which we'll explore more shortly. With the same control point settings, different training models will exhibit different pose behavior. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the core training model, which comes embedded free with the basic AccuPose tool. Let's explore control points first. With control points, there are four settings, and you can see them indicated on the hip effector. With control point TR, both translate and rotate are controlled by the user. And we can see the result when I move the foot effector. With control point T, only translate is controlled by the user, while the rotation result will be calculated by AI. As a result, you can see more automatic rotation in this example. With control point R, it's the opposite. This time rotation is defined by the user, while translate results are calculated by AI. So unless we specifically rotate here, our character will remain facing straight forward. Finally, with no control points active, AI will take over completely generating the pose it thinks is best for both translate and rotation values depending on the position of the leg. So with four different control point settings, you can see we get four unique poses as a result. We'll explore these a bit more as we move along. You can open AccuPose via the animation menu, after which you'll see different gizmos on your character. These are effectors or control points, which are used to generate poses. If we switch over to the Control Panel tab, you'll also see these effectors on our Control Dummy. To set the Control Panel status for any effector, you can click on the Translate and Rotate icons next to the dummy. You'll notice that the gizmo changes to reflect the type of effector setting you have. You can also right-click the effector and set it from there as well. If the hip is set to TR mode, moving the leg will create a balancing pose, while if you set it to R only, it will go into more of a walking pose. Setting it to T and moving the leg will create more of a kicking pose. The default setting will have the hip effector set to T and R, and the leg set to T. We can use these effectors in combination to create a unique seated pose in no time at all. To refine the transform or rotate position of the entire body, be sure to enable Move Body first. To enable Transform Mode, we can use the Shift W hotkey and Shift E for rotation. These modes will also automatically become active when you move or rotate the effector itself. So W hotkey to transform position will enable T mode, while E for rotating will enable R mode. You'll notice that specifically for the head effector, there is no option for T mode, so it is disabled. You'll also notice the same thing when adjusting the fingers as well. Adjusting the fingers won't cause any changes to the rest of the pose, since the fingers aren't subject to AI interpretation. Next, let's explore some of the control point presets, starting with the hip. Selecting this preset in the control panel will apply transform and rotation modes to the hip only. This allows us to easily use rotation to get our character lying down on his back or side. 
You can set this using Shift 2 and also easily get your character to lie down on his stomach or do a handstand. Next we have the hip and feet preset, which will apply the same modes to the hip, but only transform to the feet. This preset allows us to quickly set poses like sitting on a chair or on the floor, as the feet will remain planted when using the transform gizmo on the hip. This preset uses the Shift 3 hotkey. We can easily get our character into poses like on his knees, crouching, or crawling. Finally, there's the CP All preset, which sets the hip to TR, the feet and hands to T, and the head to R. This preset is assigned the Shift 4 hotkey. In this mode, all limbs are controlled directly by the user, so AI involvement is minimal. This preset is useful when you want to control small adjustments more accurately. When using the presets, it's recommended to move the effectors that already have the control points set first in order to achieve your initial pose, and then move on to refining the effectors that don't have control points set. Let's talk about lock constraints next. As you can see, without a lock constraint set on the hand here, we can pull the hand away from where it's planted. So, lock constraints are useful for maintaining the position of an effector as much as possible. However, if we apply transform and rotate locks on the hand, you'll see it indicated on the effector, and the gizmo will gray out. Now when we move the hip effector around, the upper body will bend and twist accordingly. You can also set your locks via the right click menu. Let's look at a different scenario to show the difference with having locks on multiple effectors simultaneously. If we move our character's left hand effector back here, you'll see a natural rotation of the hip and some slight movement in the legs to accommodate the new position. To maintain as little movement as possible in these areas, we can multi-select the hip and knee effectors and lock them at the same time. There's also a lock lower preset, which locks all lower body effectors. Now if we do the same transform position change with our left hand, we have no movement at all in the lower body. If we want to lock our right hand, we can also use the Shift Z hotkey to lock translate and rotate. If we then move the left hand, you will see that it will now remain locked in position. If I open the hand and place it flat on the ground, you'll also notice that the finger position changes slightly. If you want to maintain that position, you can use the dedicated finger lock feature, after which you'll see black markers appear. You can also use the Keep Finger Adjustment option to automatically lock the fingers every time they're adjusted. Similar to the control point presets, there are also four lock presets as well. Lock Upper will set both translate and rotate locks on all the effectors above the hip, including fingers. You can see the difference in result when adjusting the legs now. There is also Lock Lower, which will set translate and rotate locks on all effectors below the hip. Now we can freely adjust the upper body while the lower body remains planted. When you only want to tweak a few effectors and let the AI make corrections, you can use Lock All. In this scenario, if we use Lock All, but turn off the locks for the neck and fingers, we can then use Compute to reinterpret the pose based on the current control point settings to generate a more natural pose with less torso twisting and more natural finger position. With different training models such as this street fighting one, we can set different control points and locks and apply poses to the model to generate numerous unique results. You can then manually adjust the different effectors of each to customize your own pose in seconds. 
By learning more about AI-assisted pose generation with AccuPose, you can easily generate poses and animations based off of different training models. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.